जननी शारदा देवी राम कृष्ण जगद्गु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रुवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मु we were discussing shri ramakrishna's ecstatic state in which he was after the dusk he was singing and dancing now he is in other's house in his drawing room he was dancing yem rakhan and other devotees were present after the music he sat down still in ecstatic mood ecstatic mood is bhava samadhi continuing bhava samadhi is little external awareness where the whole world looks like a painted non moving background it is silent observer this world it is no no movements no nothing it is just like a painted i is in his own world he is not able to yet come down to the normal human consciousness he said to rakhal this religious fervor is not like rain in the rainy season which comes in torrents and goes in torrents it is like an image of shiva that has not been set up by human hands but is a natural one that has sprung up as it were from the bowels of the earth the other day you left in a temper i pray to the divine mother to forgive you shri ram krishna is telling he said to rakhal this is religious fervor shri ram krishna is in ecstatic mood he was dancing and singing he is sitting and he is just coming down from the samadhi sthiti he is coming to the normal consciousness he looks at rakhal rakhal is sitting in front of him he looks at rakhal and says this is re- religious fervor hmm. that is fervor when we say it is emotions flowing out it may be anger it may be lust it may be greed uh, emotions it may be general love it may be attachments i am feeling something feeling is expressed as fervor one is static which is there one is in sleeping suptavastha my feelings are in suptavastha there i am able to recognize and sometimes it comes out beyond my control as external i am but it is usually the term fervor is used in a good sense though anger is also a kind of fervor but we don't use that term fervor usually though it is emotional out expression external expression of the now inside me it is swelling up fervor i am feeling intense love for god and to the extent i have not only forgotten body with this word but body also and i am beyond the bo- limitations of mind mind limits me always senses i can silence the sense senses somehow i can close my eyes i can plug my ears do something but mind is always i am a slave of mind at all times till i conquer mind and it has only way to conquer mind 
we surrender to the divine there is no other way because mind doesn't belong to me mind belongs to someone else it is governed by some natural process its nature itself is the rajasik moving about mind i cannot control but by practice i can remain independent of the mind's actions and its nature and when i turn inward mind follows me its nature is from the world ne actually mind is like a water something is needed to make it shaking what shakes in human existence is vasana these vasanas from inside they cannot have hold on any part of our being it, vasanas cannot hold body it cannot hold senses it cannot hold because senses were only recipients body is only a matter it cannot work beyond the drive of the vasana behind body behind senses associate with the intellect all this is one common factor is mind mind is receiving my senses i is seeing mind is receiving what i is seeing senses all senses are under the mind mind is the common factor for all senses and intellect and heart also it mediates though it is not under the control the mind and the heart are not say buddhi intellect and heart are not under the control of mind but mind has such a nature that it makes the heart and intellect to yield the because these have motherly feelings towards mind oh my mind the intellect whatever mind asks for intellect helps it to attain i want something to eat the buddhi will help in the to get that though your buddhi knows it is not good but it has attraction for mind it has affiliation it has uh, affection for mind this makes it do but a time comes when mind is from mind behind the mind another power of the intellect independent of the intellect it starts coming emerging out it is generated it's created by the spiritual urge that is hidden within the spiritual urge converts and make this intellect uh, endows this supplies with spiritual awareness small it is like small current being given to an insect micro it start immediately uh, becoming active like that the from intellect emergence viveka from heart emergence divine love these instigating power for this intellect to become to em to put out to project forth viveka and for heart to project out divine love from heart divine love must come out it is holding on to the world divine love has to come out and from intellect the vivek has to come out this the i am spiritual i am divine each man is potentially divine this divinity is my near real nature other nature has superimposed i want to eat i want to enjoy i want to move move about i want to see uh, all these are superimposition over that it is like a in a mirror but these become important prominent inner things are covered so this vasana is holding only mind and to release it the only way is to pray and surrender 
the moment we pray and surrender from within i am opening the door for the spiritual urge within me spiritual urge within me i am opening its door to express itself to present itself uh, it is not exposed to god now it is getting a immediate the moment first thing is we do in sadhana is prarthana prayer go on doing prayer go on doing prayer why should you go on doing prayer it is opening exposing my inner self to god to nature so this and where from it is germinating and coming out is from my own spiritual existence which is there a spiritual urge to go back to the source i have to go back to the source i have to meet god i have to become one with him so that is making me to generate so here shri ram krishna is telling spiritual fervor it is from deep within it is emerging out it is a fountain from my spiritual existence it is not my emotional feelings mm, i am feeling for my child is dead or sick i am weeping ha uh, i am up my emotions are upset mm, or i am enjoying my son got a fine job somewhere uh, i am enjoying i am expressing some fervor oh what a nice thing and all that when i am telling that it is earthly momentary things everything is perishable but spiritual uh, religious fervor how the religion is expression of the spiritual collective spiritual awareness of a community expressing at a large social level is the religion religion and spirituality spirituality is individualized religion which is common for all the basis and culmination of every religion is spirituality it originates from spirituality it culminates in spirituality but it is expression at collective level social level correct spirituality is individual level uh, but spirituality can cannot be there at collective level uh, how it expresses is we as culture festivals uh, lectures satras so many uh, even marriages um, thread ceremony upanayana all this uh, in religion is expression at gross level where it unites all people it is spiritual base base is spiritual but it cross physical level not at the existential level the moment it is moving towards existential level, it becomes spiritual it if it is at cross physical level it is expressing in physical level but maintaining the spiritual ideal then it becomes a religion so religious fervor why shri ram krishna is telling is not spiritual fervor he is religious fervor because he is demonstrating something of the divine from the transcendental where you cannot go from transcendental he is expressing to all people look the god is here look he is showing so it is his religious fervor it is coming to demonstrate a thing to the world uh, how clear you see how shri ram krishna is telling and expressing hmm religion it is not like a rainy season rain which comes in torrents and goes in torrents hmm the rain came heavily 
went away and joined the ocean. Where is it? No way. But spiritual, it is everlasting. Now I became emotionally upset. I talked so many things, and next moment I am the same person. No, it is not spirituality or anything. It is some emotional upsets. Mm. But here, it is not Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna is clearly expressing, this is for your good, for the individual's good, from the real God, the transcendental, from there I am bringing and projecting it out. For the welfare of humanity, for the welfare of nature, for the welfare of all beings, I am bringing out and presenting it. It is not like, like rain fell and rain went away as dirty water back to the ocean. No. In torrents it came, in torrents it went away. No. It is something coming to raise humanity, to raise the individual to a higher level of consciousness, to make him realize God. Mm. He is taking every opportunity to express the truth told in Vedas. Sri Ramakrishna is demonstrating here. All Upanishads in Bhagavad Gita, Dhyana Shloka, it comes that Sarva Upanishada or Gau. Uh, Krishna is the Gopalanandana, he is the milkman, milker of the cows. Hmm. So Sri Ramakrishna is making, not only milking out, but making it butter, converting it into ghee and preserving it for the future generations. For people immediately to use, he is giving butter that they can keep for long in water. So milk gets spoiled in no time and becomes unfit for use. But here Sri Ramakrishna is giving out the essence of all the Upanishads, not only Hindu Upanishads, but wherever, whatever way people have realized God, whether of Christianity or Islam or Zoroastrian or whatever religion exists in the world, all religion, the essence he is bringing out. Look, this is spirituality, this is divinity. He is giving, presenting it to the world. Mm. So, it is not that comes and goes. Somebody, people came, he lectured and went away. People clapped and went away. He was again back to himself and people were back to their own world beings. No, it is a thing which has come to transform the jiva, undergo a conversion within, from the world to the spiritual. It is a shift in the paradigm, shift in the whole existential aspect of a jiva, of society, dharma samsthapana. When society is linked to the, its existential aspect, it is called dharma samsthapana. The whole society has to be raised to the spiritual level of its real existence. The whole universe, when we see universe, the humanity and all that, the world, if we see, the, it is a, it is an expression of God. The, whether it is individual or society, or so many innumerable beings at all times, now vegetation is there. Every tree is dying away. Another tree is standing there in, with no time. New trees are coming, old trees are going away. But vegetation remains as it is. Millions and millions of years, the vegetation is as it is. But trees are not same. 
they are going away. But each tree has a, each life on this earth has the same root in the divine. All the trees in the world have the earth as its root. From earth, it is standing on earth, it is getting all things from the earth for its sustenance. Earth is its root, where it is rooted and from where it is taking life. All lives are rooted in God. Every life has its relationship with, but he has forgotten. He sees only the external world, not his root, not his existential aspect. He sees his personality. His personality alone he knows. He doesn't know his root. He doesn't know what is within, where from he came, where he is going to, where he is rooted in for its existence. He doesn't know. The personality is different from the existential aspect of a jiva. All society may be different people, but all are rooted in the same earth, same God. In God we are all rooted. When we go to sleep, in deep sleep second stage, we are one with the cosmic consciousness, individual consciousness, Vyashti Chaitanya becomes one with the Samashti Chaitanya. All Jeevas are rooted in the same Samashti Chaitanya. Where I go to deep sleep, you also go to the deep sleep and reach the same point. One infinite cosmic consciousness. We all go to there. And again wake up and come to our body level. Each one is a body level. When we sleep, each is going back to its source. I am going back to my source from where I emerged. So at root we are one. The social, if everybody, majority of people are coming to our spiritual awareness, hmm, then we all will be tuned to each other. Hmm, and it is like a loka by itself. Uh, Ramakrishna Loka like hmm. the Westerners and uh, all people have started using consciousness, Krishna consciousness, divine consciousness, Rama consciousness. Like that we become Ramakrishna consciousness. Uh, all are belonging to. Now it becomes like a Loka. When I was in US, uh, a group of people invited me. They all belong to Ramana Maharshi's followers. And uh, the whole, all have one understanding, one idea, one... You cannot differentiate one's thoughts and feelings from others. All. Mm. But they sing common bhajan, common way, common understanding, common feeling with each other. Mm. Uh, Tamil roots are there. Mm. They were all Tamil speaking people. And Ramana Marshi is Tamil by base. Most of his things are translated to English, but the roots are still in the Tamil. They sing those things which Ramana Marshi has written in Tamil. So, one common language, common culture, common awareness, common uh, their ideal. It was beautiful. And I too could enter into that uh, Raman Marsh's ideas. I could open and present to them. Hmm. So very rarely we see having that common uh, cultural background, all Tamil speaking people. So this is, it becomes like a, so this is social level of spirituality, which we call religious fervor, Sri Ramakrishna using the term. Hmm. The society has to be lifted 
individuals have to be re re released. They are bound from suffering and bondage, they are to be released. It is called redemption of the soul. The souls are released, the society is lifted, human consciousness is given the ideal to follow. There is cosmic changes that happens by all this. So God works. Avatara taking, it works at various levels of existence, which is beyond our understanding. As you go, uh, divine reveals you the truth. But one thing is somewhere you have to start with all sincerity and longing and dedication. Mm. And without missing your duties of life and disciplines. All these have to be maintained, but in awareness, it longing to go beyond and hold on to the truth. How clearly Sri Ramakrishna gives you see, in torrents it comes and goes, it is not like that. It is something solid, which is going to remain generations after generation, eternally lifting the humanity. It is like image of Shiva that has, as it were, from the Swayambhu, it has emerged by itself, Swayambhu, not man-made and created. In the ancient days, the sages used to move uh, from place to place. They have to walk or go by some yogic methods that are travel. And then some places they used to find pure spiritual vibrations like volcano coming out. They go and see where from this is coming here. They see a stone. Oh, this is Swayambhu. It is self-made. It God has presented himself here. It is vibrations are coming out. These are called Swayambhu Lingas. Sri Ramakrishna is doing an exercise, Swayambhu Linga. It is emerging from the unknown, for the unknown purpose to fulfill. It is like image of Shiva that has not been set up by human hands, but he is natural one that has sprung up, hmm, as it were. Hmm. The other day, you left Dakshineshwar in a temper. Hmm. Means he was angry and he went away. I prayed to the Divine Mother to forgive you. Because Sri Ramakrishna is doing huge yajna. All his tapas, all his life, he has lived for others. And someone neglecting and going away, Mm. He cannot come up any time again. So Thakur is, is compassionate, love, mother, see that his errors are erased or deleted, mm. make him. And the real inner goodness is there, real spirituality is there. Some, mm, the small dirt sometimes emerge out. We used to have pump stoves in earlier days. Mm. Kerosene will be there. Small particle floating somewhere or a carbon. Uh, that hole from where it is emerging out, it gets blocked. So stove makes start making sound and one side small flame or something is coming. Then we have a pin. Just pin and leave it. Again it burns, that it is pushing down the dirt. Like that, small dirt, such a powerful pumping and pressure is inside, but it is not allowing small, remove that half, it emerges out. I pray to you, the master was still in an absorbed mood and said to Adhar, my son, Meditate on deity whose name is you chanted. My son, meditate on deity whose name you chanted. With these words, he touched other's tongue with his finger and wrote something on it. Did the master thereby imprint spirituality to other? 
impart spirituality to other. With this, this chapter ends, but we will just, we may have to just see the meaning of this writing on the tongue also. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastur